Greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Leon, working with House of Healing Ministries, Manipal. Today, I am planning to highlight to you a few aspects on faith. Well, it's not possible for us to discuss every aspect of faith in this one program, but I want to highlight a few aspects of faith so that your understanding can be broadened and you can operate in the right kind of faith and receive your miracle from God. You see, faith is the currency of heaven. It's by faith that everything that's available for you in the spirit becomes available for you in the physical. In fact, faith is synonymous to walking with God. If you read the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verses 5, it says, By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Verse 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. If we read verse 5 and verse 6 separately, we tend to lose the meaning of the scripture. In fact, verse 5 and verse 6 refers to the same piece of scripture. It's supposed to be read as one entity, as a single piece of scripture. It says, by faith, Enoch was taken away. He was taken away because he pleased God. And how did he please God? By faith. Many times we have this understanding, God was not pleased with Enoch because of his moral works. That is not what it says away. It's not by works that Enoch pleased God. It's very clear, Enoch pleased God by faith. If you read of Hebrews chapter 11 verses 5 and 6, it says, by an act of faith, Enoch skipped death completely. They looked all over and couldn't find him because God had taken him. We know on the basis of reliable testimony that before he was taken, he pleased God. It's impossible to please God apart from faith. And why? Because anyone who wants to approach God must believe both that he exists and that he cares enough to respond to those who seek him. In fact, in the message version of the Bible, verse 5 and verse 6, they clubbed as a single piece of scripture. Why? Because by breaking it, there's a tendency that we might lose or misunderstand this. Enoch did not please God by works. He pleased God by faith. It's very clear. By faith, he walked with God and he pleased God. So walking with God is synonymous to walking in faith. So if you approach life through the eyes of faith, you are walking with God. If you're operating in faith in every aspect, in every area of life, you are walking with God. But what is faith? The word of God says in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The very seat of faith is your heart. The substance rests in your heart. That is what the word of God says in the book of Ephesians, the breastplate of righteousness, of love and faith. The breastplate protects your heart. What we understand from that is that faith rests, this substance called faith rests in your heart. This substance, which is the evidence of things hoped for, so evidence of this faith, which is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, it rests in your heart. But how is a substance produced? How do we produce a substance? It's essential for us to understand it because the word of God says, by faith, Enoch was able to walk with God and please God. So we understand the importance of, of operating and walking in faith. We are called to walk in faith. The word of God says, the just will live by faith. So this substance, how was it produced? How do you get substance? This substance called faith in your heart. The word of God says in the book of Romans chapter 10 verses 17 that faith comes by hearing the word of Christ. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. In many translations, it is mentioned the word of God. Actually, if you go to the original Greek, it is a word of Christ. The word for the Greek word for God is Theos and the Greek word for Christ is Christos. In the original Greek, it is the word of Christos, the word of Christ. It is by hearing the word of Christ that the substance of faith is produced in your heart. 
and it says by hearing it's a is a present tense by continual hearing of the word of christ faith keeps being produced in your heart in the book of hebrews chapter 11 that by faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of god so that the things which are seen were not created by the things that are visible by faith we understand how do we understand the worlds were created we understand it by faith the world which is something visible the physical world around you was not created by visible materials it was created by the spoken word of god word of god says in the book of romans chapter 4 17 that god calls into existence that do not exist but how by the word of god god calls things in existence through his word there is faith in everyone's heart be it a believer or non believer there is the god kind of faith or there is a human faith any person has some kind of faith they believe in something or the other a reason why somebody will not uh, go out in the night when there is thunder and lightning is because they have a fear they have this kind of a faith in them negative faith that if they go out in this circumstance they may get struck by a lightning so there is some kind of a faith The reason why somebody will not touch a hot pan is because through the experiences in life they know if they touch something that is hot they'll get burnt because they believe in something through their experiences they believe in something they live accordingly so everybody has some kind of faith or the other so there is human faith and there is a god kind of faith the human faith is something that comes from your experiences in life but the god kind of faith is produced in your heart by the word of christ like like what i said earlier the book of romans chapter 10 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of christ so by hearing the word of christ faith is produced in your heart the book of ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 says for we have been saved by grace through faith and that too not of yourselves it is the gift of god ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says for you have been saved by grace through faith and that too it is not of yourselves it is a gift of god what the scripture says is that even the faith that you have is not of your own it is a gift of god it is something that is produced in your heart it's not something that you even you know stir it up it's something that 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 is produced in your heart when you receive the word of christ when you keep listening to messages full of jesus when you keep listening to messages full of christ the goodness of god how great he is and and what he has done for you on the cross of calvary the message of christ the the, the gospel of christ faith is produced the substance is produced in your heart through which you receive salvation the book of hebrews chapter 4 verses 2 says that the message that they heard did not profit them because they did not receive it united with others in faith that is what the word of god says which means the word was spoken to them but because they did not embrace the word that was spoken to them faith was not they were not able to partake of the faith that could have been produced in their heart so it is important that you embrace the word of god that you meditate on the word of god for faith to be produced in your heart now again as i said faith is a substance that is deposited in your heart some people have this misunderstanding that some have little faith some have big faith it's not true it's the same amount of faith that is deposited in all of our hearts it's the same amount of faith if you read the book of second peter chapter 1 verse 1 it says simon peter a born servant and apostle of jesus christ to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our god and savior jesus christ peter is saying to these believers that you have obtained like precious faith with us the same faith that we have received you have received the same faith we have received you have received by the righteousness of our god and savior jesus christ it's not by works it's by his righteousness we have received the same level of faith the same faith that peter used to raise the dead the same faith that was deposited in the heart of peter when he walked on water the same faith that he used to heal the lame if you turn within the book of acts chapter 3 we get to see the faith that peter had from verse 1 onwards 
Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who enter the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms, and fixing his eyes on him, John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. What we see over here is that, that Peter said, we don't have silver or gold, but what we do have, we give to you. That is the faith, the faith in Jesus Christ. We read in verse 16, if you read down, And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through this, through the name of Jesus, has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. What we understand is that we all have the same measure of faith. We all have the same supernatural faith of God deposited in our hearts when we receive the word of God. When we receive the word of Christ, the Christ-centered word of God, the good news of God, when we receive the good news of Christ, the faith is produced in our hearts and we all have the same measure of faith available to us. Then this question comes, then why is that that brother has a greater miracle? I, I don't have the same miracle. He, he is able to operate more in faith and I'm not able to operate in the same amount of faith. Well, the difference is how you think. It is a knowledge problem. It's about knowing what is available to you. Your faith, though the same faith is available to all, it is your understanding of it, of how to operate it and how to use it makes it effective. For example, if I have 1000 rupees and if another person has 1000 rupees, we both have the same amount of money, but he can use his 1000 rupees to buy something for out of 1000 rupees, he can purchase something for 300 rupees. And out of the 1000 rupees I have, I can purchase something for 500 rupees. We both had the same amount of money. But what made the difference is the way we used it. And why people find it difficult to operate in faith is because they don't understand, they don't know, they don't have the knowledge of it. The Word of God says in the book of Philemon chapter 1 verse 6, the Word of God says in the book of Philemon chapter 1 verse 6, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. It says your faith becomes effective when you acknowledge every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. Beloved, the healing is in you. The prosperity is in you. The freedom is in you. The security is in you. The safety is in you. Everything is available to you. It's available to you in the spirit. You don't have to pray for it. It's already in you. But the moment you acknowledge it, the moment you renew your mind with what is already available for you, you're able to effectively operate and release it into the physical realm by faith. So the first aspect of faith is that you must learn to acknowledge. You must learn to acknowledge what is available to you. Through the finished work of Jesus, everything that you need is available for you. You want deliverance? It's available to you. You want freedom? It's available to you. You want forgiveness? It's available to you. You want prosperity? It's available to you. You want health? It's available to you. Everything is available to you. The word of God says, by his stripes you are healed. The word of God says, he became poor so that you would become rich. Everything is available to you through the finished work of Jesus. But whatever is available to you through the finished work of Jesus becomes available to you in the physical realm or is transacted into the physical realm by faith. So when you acknowledge, when you understand, when you acknowledge all the things available for you, your mind is renewed. The renewing of your mind is very important for you to operate effectively in faith. You see, when you go to church, when you hear the word of grace, when you hear the word of Christ, you are so empowered. You know that you are a child of God. 
you know that that you have a father who loves you you know that you don't have to worry you know he'll provide for you so you are reminded every time you read the word of god when you go to church when you spend time with god's word you're reminded of your identity of who you are in christ what happens is that when you step out into the world satan tries to rewind your mind he tries to rewind your mind so there are two forces operating against you one is the reminding power of god's word other is the rewinding power of satan he tries to rewind your mindset through circumstances he throws situations in front of you and he makes you doubt the word of god he makes you doubt your identity that's exactly what satan did in the temptation that jesus that jesus experienced if you read the book of matthew chapter 3 and 4 we hear as soon as jesus came out of the water the heavens opened up and god the father said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased we read few verses down that he was taken into the wilderness by the spirit of the lord and satan tempted him and the first temptation that satan brought was his identity so we see what happened in matthew chapter 4 is that the spirit of the lord brings him to the wilderness to be seated tempted by satan and satan tempts him by saying if you are the son of god he made him doubt his identity if you are the son of god this is exactly what happens the reason why many believers are not able to operate effectively in faith is because they don't acknowledge they are not able to walk with a renewed mind beloved every day when you wake up you need to remind yourself of who you are in Christ you need to remind yourself of all that's available through you through the finished work of Jesus you need to remind yourself of everything that the word of god says about you acknowledge every good thing in you you have the same faith that was there in peter the same precious faith we have obtained the same precious faith that was there in peter when he walked on water the same faith which he used to heal the lame man the same faith he used to raise the dead is in you but it is your renewed mind that helps you to effectively operate in it the other aspect of faith is that it must be confessed faith is meant to be confessed the word of god says in the book of romans chapter 10 verse 10 for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation with the mouth confession is made unto salvation the word of god says that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks few moments back i told you the very rest place of faith is your heart faith rests in your heart and if your heart is full of faith it is confessed so confession is another important aspect of faith that you confess the word of god it says confession unto salvation the word salvation comes from the greek word soteria which means deliverance preservation safety health prosperity it means all these things some people have a misunderstanding salvation refers to only the saving of your soul from hell no that is wrong Salvation is does not refer to only the saving of your soul from hell. We have this tendency to to define and understand everything in terms of sin. If somebody asks us what is holiness, we will say, yeah, holiness. Many of us will say holiness is the quality of keeping one self undefiled from sin. But let me tell you something. Even before sin came, God was holy. The Word of God says, "Be holy, for I am holy." God says, "Be holy, for I am holy." Even before sin came into picture God was holy holiness is the very nature of God in the same way even even salvation many times people think salvation only refers to say being saved from sin being saved from hell no salvation refers to being safe it refers to being full of good health it refers to all these things that is the wholesome meaning of the word salvation and the word says confession unto salvation You need to confess your health. Confess when you're having a pain in your body. See, by his stripes I am healed. Through the finished work of Jesus I am healed. When there is some kind of a lack in your life, say some kind of a financial lack, say that that through his poverty I am made rich. The word of God says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 18 that God gives us the power to make wealth. God is interested in your prosperity. The word of God is very clear. If you read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 all the blessings of God are enlisted over there and yes very clearly God wants you to prosper God wants you to be happy he wants you to be the head and not the tail God is interested in your prosperity he's interested in your well-being 
every aspect of your well-being is interested in your good married life is interested he's, he's he desires you to walk in good health and that is why he sent his son jesus not only that so that you'll be saved from hell but so that you'll experience wholesome salvation in your life beloved i i i i pray that you will understand that you will understand this message so that you will be delivered from many areas in your life that you're struggling with let me tell you a testimony of something that happened to me when i was in my second year in engineering i fell from the train and i injured my leg my both my knees and my left knee was especially creating problems for me my right knee was not creating many problems but my left knee was having a a a, a, a very bad pain and i soon started limping when i went to the doctors the doctor said that that there has to be surgery done for this knee otherwise there is no other this knee can be made whole but what what i started doing is that i started confessing the word of god i am healed by his stripes i started believing the 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 healing that is available for me through the finished work of jesus and as i started confessing the word of god by his stripes i am healed by his stripes i am healed jesus said it is finished to every knee pain i i experience healing in my knee and i'm able to have a normal knee now beloved i'm telling you confess the word of god in your situation that is one aspect of faith faith ends up in you confessing the word of god confessing what 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 god will do in your situations if it's in any area of lack confess what the wo- word of god says concerning a situation another aspect of faith is faith always acts faith is always in action the word of god says that faith without works is dead many times people have misunderstood that scripture as this scripture refers to the to the very nature of faith to the very nature of faith now i want to highlight another aspect of faith faith is active and it is not passive if you read the book of james chapter 2 verse 14 it says what does it profit my brethren if someone says he has faith but does not have works can faith save him if a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food and one of you says to them depart in peace be warmed be warmed and filled but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body what does it profit there's also faith by itself if it does not have works is dead but someone will say you have faith and i have works show me your faith without works and i will show you my faith by my works what james is trying to say is that genuine faith produces works it's not referring to moral works which you must do to become righteous you are already righteous because of the finished work of jesus the word of god says he who knew no sin has become a sin for you so that you would be the righteousness of god in christ jesus these are not works for you to become righteous these works refer to the nature of faith there is a uh, there is a very famous uh, story uh, uh, an entire church prayed for rain but when they went out only one girl carried the umbrella with her because she really believed that god would answer the prayer the rest of them did not really operate in genuine faith that is what the scripture is talking about the genuine nature of faith if you really believe that god has blessed you be a good giver be a good giver you'll be a good giver you will give because you know you're already rich you will you will get up and walk because you know you are already healthy that is what this, this word is referring to the very nature of faith it says in verse 21 was not abraham our father justified by works when he offered isaac his son on the altar do you see that faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect see what we what we read in verse 21 and 22 is that abraham was able to offer isaac as an offering because he had genuine faith if you read the book of hebrews it says that by faith he offered isaac because he believed in his heart that god is able to bring him back to life it is actually by faith that he offered he knew that god was able to bring him back to life even if isaac was dead he had that kind of faith that is what the scripture is talking about now before i before I, i finish my message i just want to once again uh, uh, review all that i spoke to you the first thing i told you is that faith is synonymous to walking with god enoch walked with god by faith because of his faith he pleased god and he was not god took him another thing i told you is that faith is substance of things hoped for evidence of things not seen and this substance is produced by the hearing of the word of christ then i told you about three aspects of faith i told you about acknowledgement the faith becomes effective when you start acknowledging all the good things in you then i told you about 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 confession how faith must be confessed then i told you about faith being in action 
that faith is active and it is not passive. I want you to understand that you have the faith of God, the supernatural faith of God deposited in your heart. I want you to renew your mind, acknowledge all the good things in you, the good health, the prosperity, the blessing, everything available for you and walk in it. Confess all that is available for you and, and, and operate and walk in it. Let me just pray for you right now. Father, I thank you that, that, that you will bless the hearers with this message of Father. I pray that you will bless their hearts, that you will help them to walk in the faith, to understand the faith that is deposited in their hearts. That they will understand the only gap between the natural and the supernatural is an unrenewed mind. That they will be able to walk in the faith that through the acknowledgement of every good thing, through the acknowledgement of every good thing deposited in their heart, every good thing that is deposited in their spirit, they will be able to walk in good health, in prosperity, in deliverance, in freedom. Yes, O God. And I pray, God, that you will reveal to them, O Father, all that is available to them through the finished work of Jesus. I thank you that you hear our prayers. In Jesus' name, Amen.